Hello and welcome to the seventh installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to become familiar with the basics of writing scripts for events and inserting them into the game. To do this, we will be introducing a program called Extreme Script Editor, or just XSE, by Hackmu, a retired member of the ROM hacking community. It may also be a good idea to have a hex editing program available, such as HXD, which is what I'll be using. This video will be broken down into the following segments. How does XSE work? How can I write a simple NPC script? And how do I insert my script into the game? Following these segments will be an application demonstration. In this final part, we will be creating and inserting a script very similar to the one we made during this tutorial. The first script we're going to write will be extremely basic. It will simply allow us to interact with an NPC and read some dialogue. To begin, open XSE. Yours might look a little different than mine because I've customized its design under the format menu item. There is a hexadecimal slash decimal format converter to the right of the window. This can be used as a regular calculator or converting numbers between formats. It's a very useful tool when you're writing heavy scripts. The yellow section underneath it is just for any notes you might want to take. The majority of the window is covered with the space for writing your script, along with their respective line numbers off to the left side of the window. We'll go over the other icons and buttons as we use them. Let's jump right into it. The first command you'll want to type is pound dynamic 0x800,000. I'll explain every line as they're written. Pound dynamic tells the compiler that we're looking for some free space in our ROM to insert this script into. After all, we can't go inserting brand new dialogue without overwriting some free space. The 0x800,000 is the memory address, or offset, where we want to begin searching for free space in our ROM. Whenever we use the notation 0x and then a number, we're telling the compiler that this value is written in hexadecimal format instead of decimal format. Since 0x800,000 isn't the same as 800,000, it's important for us to remember this notation. In order to clear any confusion with this, open your ROM in a hex editing program. The first things you'll see are a bunch of hexadecimal values corresponding to their respective memory addresses, or offsets. We do not want to touch these values, since they are all part of the game and changing them would result in unpredictable consequences. You're going to want to search for the values FF, which denote free space in the ROM. Emerald version is notorious for its very limited amount of free space, while Fire Red version is known for its vast amount of free space. You can see this by scrolling through and looking for chunks of FF values. We're not going to be very specific with our memory usage, so close your hex editor. This exercise was just to give you an impression of how data looks to us when it's stored in the ROM, and what data we can overwrite for our own purposes. As I've said before, the pound dynamic command tells the compiler where to start looking for free space in the ROM. We're using 0x800,000 just because it's a conventional point to begin looking for free space. On line 2, type pound org at start. This denotes the beginning of the script. Simple as that. On line 3, type lock. This will lock the player in place so he or she cannot move while the NPC is speaking. On line 4, type face player. This will force the NPC to stop what he or she is doing and look at the player. On line 5, type message box at talk 0x6. The message box command displays a dialog box which displays the NPC's text. The at talk pointer tells the compiler where this particular NPC dialog is stored. Obviously, at the moment, there's no space called at talk yet, so let's make one. Below the script, type pound org at talk. Underneath that, type equals and then a space. This is where we tell our NPC what to say. For the sake of this example, we'll keep things simple and have him say, I'm an NPC. There's nothing else we have to do here, so let's return to the main script. The 0x6 tells the compiler that this is a regular message box. There are other values that we can use here to give our dialog box special properties, which we'll get to later. On line 6, type release. This will release the player from his or her locked position. Finally, type end on line 7. This indicates the end of a script. That's it! The script is complete. 
Let's go back over it and review what's going on. On line 1, we tell the compiler where we want it to start looking for free space in the ROM so we can insert our script without overwriting anything. Line 2 indicates the start of a script. Line 3 and 4 lock the player into place and force the NPC to stop what he or she is doing and look at the player, respectively. Line 5 displays a dialog box with no special properties, as denoted by the 0x6 value. The at talk pointer points to the actual dialog that the NPC will say. Finally, lines 6 and 7 release the player from his or her locked position and end the script respectively. Now we need to insert this script into the game. To do this, we must first compile it. Save your script somewhere. Click on the Tools menu item, then click Batch Compiler. You'll have to open your ROM and browse for the location where you saved your script. Once you do this, it should appear in the small white box. Click the checkbox next to it and click Compile. A list of offsets will pop up. This tells us exactly where in the ROM our script data has been stored. Look for the at start pointer offset and click Copy. We'll need this value soon. Open Advanced Map and switch to the Events tab. There's a small section at the bottom of the list at the right side of the window that displays how many of each events of each type exist on the loaded map. Increment the number of person events by 1, then click the Change Events button. This will add a player event and place it at the top left of the map. You can drag this event to the desired position and, if you want, change the movement type of the NPC so it isn't totally static. In your NPC's script offset box, paste the value that you copied earlier in XSE. Make sure that you save your changes. Now let's check out the result in game. Here we are in Pallet Town and we can see that there is a new NPC here. When we talk to him, he says, I am an NPC. And then the script ends. Let's see if we can spot our different lines of code when we interact with the NPC. Immediately after we interact with the NPC, our player is locked into place and cannot move. At the same time, the NPC stops what he's doing and looks at us. Then, a dialog box or message box is displayed and the NPC talks to us. After that, the message box closes, our player is released, and the script has officially ended. As a side note, unlike what we've been doing in past tutorials, there are some pretty significant differences that must be noted depending on which Gen 3 game you're hacking. These differences primarily lie within differing hexadecimal values for particular commands. But you don't have to worry about it, since I'll be making sure to mention these differences when we stumble upon them. I'm going to go over one more thing. If you reopen XSE and click on the Help menu item, then click Command Help, or just press the F1 key on your keyboard, a list of every known command will be displayed. If you ever forget some small detail about a command or how to properly use it, you can always reference this list instead of searching for the answer on the internet. As an example, let's scroll through the list of commands and click on the message box command. This tool tells us what the function of the command is and its necessary parameters. A parameter is some required value that this command takes in order to work correctly. That's everything I wanted to cover in this tutorial. It was a very brief but fruitful introduction to scripting. We've hardly gone over anything in the way of scripting, but the purpose of this tutorial was just to get you familiar with the big picture of it. Using the information we've learned, we will create and insert another simple NPC into the game. Scripting is my absolute favorite thing to do in terms of hacking. There's so much stuff that you can do with scripting alone, including creating a completely new storyline, implementing new special events into your game, initiate trainer battles, and much, much more. In my opinion, it's the most mentally involved part of hacking. There are around 100 different commands you can utilize to create really diverse and immersive events, and I'll try my best to get through as much of them as I can. We're about at the end of creating and inserting this script. Everything that went into making this has been taught to you through this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask over at Pookie Community or right here in my video's comments section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 8th installment of this series.